morning. Merry Christmas to all of you. And uh, looking forward to this being a great week as we celebrate a Savior who came to save us from our sins. I want to read a scripture found in the book of Luke. Stand with me, if you would, please, for the reading of God's Word. Luke 2, I'm going to read verse 13 and 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I like that. Hey, glory to God. All glory to Him in the highest today, and certainly He's worthy of our praise. Lord bless you. It's just great to be in God's house. We've come together. We've gathered here to worship and lift up the name of Christ. Have prayer with me. Father, we come to you right now with thanksgiving and praise in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, bless this service with your presence, with your power. And Lord, meet with us today. Uh, Lord, and we pray for victory in the house of God. Thank you for all, Lord, that have gathered together. And how we just pray, Lord Jesus, you'd bless our worship now in the only way you can, Lord. And give conviction where they're sin. Reclaim those that might have got away from you. Lord, give us victory today. All glory to God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're standing. Let's sing a song. Hark the herald angels sing. die for our sins, pay our sin debt in full. And Lord, it's for that reason we can celebrate our Savior today. 
Lord, bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Here's some announcements for you uh, this morning. Some of you wondering where my Christmas tie is. My neck took out and I'm in a mess today. So just pray for my neck that I don't preach like this all morning, okay? Uh, but anyway, good to be in the Lord's house. Uh, services tonight, 6 o'clock. I'll be preaching tonight. Wednesday night, worship, 7 o'clock. Brother Rich is up this Wednesday evening, so looking forward to that being a, a good service. And of course, we're praying you all have a great Christmas with family and loved ones and uh, it's going to be different this year for a lot of folks, but I tell you what, we have a Savior uh, that, again, I'll say, that loved us and died for us and rose again, and man, we got all the, whether it just be you and by yourself or you and the wife or maybe a, a house full, we've got a reason to celebrate this year. We absolutely do, and so we thank the Lord for that. Uh, I'll not go through all the prayer lists this morning. They are many, uh, but right now we, we, don't, we have one that's still in the hospital and that is uh, Sister Shirley Burgess, okay? And uh, you be praying for Bill and Shirley. Uh, it, 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 unless the Lord intervenes, uh, she's in God's hands, but it looks like Shirley's going to go home to be with the Lord probably sometime very shortly, and uh, we'll surely uh, miss her right now. We're just going to thank God for her, you know, and uh, what a blessing uh, she is and has been, her and Bill, to our church family. So hold them up in prayer today, both of them, uh, if you will. God bless you. Listen, we come to have church this morning. Uh, we're going to worship the Lord. Glad you joined us. And uh, get your songbook. I, I'm so used to saying get your songbook. Just look at the screen, okay? And uh, what are we singing, Mike? Oh, come all you faithful. We happy birthdays last week. Any other? <laughs> Any anniversaries? Okay. We'll get her. Cheyenne. Do we have any anniversaries? Okay, we'll sing happy birthday to Cheyenne. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May the Lord bless and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Come, all ye faithful.
Silent Night.
<clears throat> Go ahead, Brother Matt. Christmas, we have in our bylaws our uh, paid staff. Uh, we present them a, a gift for Christmas, uh, which uh, comes to a week's wages. And at this time, I have Brother Larry, Brother Matt, and Sister Bailey. Is she in the? Okay. Is she in the back? Oh, there she is. If you guys will come on up, I'd like to present these gifts to you on behalf of the. Gospel Life Free Will Baptist Church family. <clears throat> yeah, that wonderful, beautiful star of Bethlehem was too high key too, but that's the way he plays. Merry Christmas, Bailey. Speech? <laughs> Brother Matt? Thank you. Brother Larry. Merry Christmas, y'all. Okay, come ahead, Ron. I was hoping we had another special. <laughs> he just told me. <laughs> Hate these things. Makes your nose run, makes your eyes water. But if it keeps me from dying, so be it. I thought this song might be appropriate for the time of the year. Okay, man. <coughs> Sweeter than the song they 
singing ever Let the world proclaim What a lovely day He'll return in clouds of glory Saints of every race Shall behold His face With Him enter heaven's city Evermore proclaim What a lovely name What a lovely name, the name of Jesus Reaching higher far than the brightest star Sweeter than the song they sing in heaven Let the world proclaim What a lovely name Oh, what a lovely name The name of Jesus Reaching higher far Than the brightest star Sweeter than the song Let the world proclaim What a lovely name What a lovely name I love the Christmas season, don't you? I really do. Appreciate the Christmas gift. Thank you very much to my church family that we love so very much. And uh, let's see. What's today? The 20th? Yesterday. 41 years now. Pressing on. I'm shooting for 50 years. That's my goal, you know. But anyway, looking forward to the Lord blessing us with a good holiday season. And, uh, and I, this is your lucky day. I'm telling you. You even got candy bar treats when you leave today. You know, uh, so I don't know. I, I just love the celebration of, of uh, Christmas, coming to God's house, and we have a Savior. Amen? Amen? Turn with me in your Bible this morning. We're going to look at the book of Luke, chapter 2. The book of Luke, chapter 2. What did Mary ponder? And that's the word that the Scripture used. What was she really considering? What was she really thinking about uh, on her first Christmas there uh, in that manger scene? Luke chapter 2. Stand with me once you get there. And uh, we're going to read the first 19 verses. And then we're going to read verses 25 through 33. So a little bit lengthy portion of Scripture. But let's get right into the the Scriptures this morning. Luke chapter 2 beginning in verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary as a spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them 
in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they had made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Now notice Verse 19, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now drop on down to verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came with the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God, and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation." which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And notice verse 33. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. They pondered and they marveled. Pray with me. Father, we come to you again in the name of Jesus. And Lord, how we pray just now that the Holy Spirit anoint the preaching of your word. Lord, we are totally dependent upon you. And we could do nothing without you. So Lord, we pray that Lord, you would use us today as your vessel to bring forth a message from the word of God, Lord, that would bring victory into some precious soul in this service this morning. Lord, we thank you again for our church family. Thank you for the many that have been able to gather together. And Lord, even today we remember the many that are home, some sick, some in quarantine. And yet how we pray you bless everyone right where they're at. And we praise you today in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. How should we celebrate Christmas this year? We'd all agree it's going to be a different Christmas, wouldn't we? Uh, it's, it's different in many ways. Uh, some families are still all gathering together. Some are gathering together in much smaller numbers. And some aren't gathering much at all. Uh, Christmas, so much different this year. It'd be hard to rate this Christmas by the food. It'd be hard to rate this Christmas uh, by, by the presents under a tree. It'd be hard to rate this Christmas as being normal to any degree at all. Uh, but I tell you what we can have. Regardless how you're celebrating Christmas, listen to me, we can have a right attitude. Amen? Amen? We, we can have, you know what, Christmas, let me say this to you right now. Christmas is going to be absolutely what you make of it. You want to have a good day and celebrate a Savior that came to love us and die for our sins? Hey, you know what, it'll be absolutely what you make of it. 
Uh, or you can get all depressed and discouraged and say, oh, we never had a Christmas like this. Uh, and it can be kind of a whole, whole, whole drum day for you. Listen, we got to have a right attitude. And, and I, I wonder what kind of an attitude did Mary have as they celebrated that first Christmas there in the manger scene of, of Bethlehem. I mean, let's ask the question, what was Mary's attitude that first Christmas? I wonder, what did Mary ponder and reflect upon? That, that one verse we saw in verse 19, Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. I mean, what did she reflect upon? What was she really thinking? What was her attitude? I mean, it'd be, you know what? And it'd be good for us to take the time this Christmas to kind of do a little bit of reflection ourselves. <laughs> it would. To, to kind, of, kind of search out the things and, and meditate on the things of God, what Christmas really is and what really happened back then and what that means to you and me this Christmas season. I mean, Mary kept all these things that Scripture said. She treasured them. I believe the things that she pondered was the things that she treasured and held dear uh, to heart. You know what? She stored them away in her mind. And, and she pondered them in her heart. Now the first thing I want you to see, what do you think Mary was really thinking about? What was her attitude? What was she pondering and considering? And the first thing I believe that Mary was pondering and, and really uh, reflecting upon, was it was the providence of God concerning the birth of her son Jesus. The providence of God. How did God have His hand in all of this? How did the sovereign God of heaven use this simple, humble virgin young lady in all of His wonderful, miraculous plan to bring us a Savior. I believe she certainly must have uh, pondered about the providence of God concerning the birth of her son. First of all, she certainly could have pondered the providence of God about the place that it occurred. They had, Remember now, where was they from? Why, they was over Nazareth. But all of a sudden we realize she is in Bethlehem. Does anybody by any means think that was an accident? Oh, listen, they was exactly where it had been prophesied that the child would be born in Bethlehem. Well, I'm going to read, I'm going to read do more little reading. Uh, I love these verses. I can't wear out the Christmas story. Look at them first seven verses again. And it came to, in chapter 2, it came to pass in those days, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one, into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, the city of David, which is called, here it is, Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Why'd they go there? To be taxed with Mary as a spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. That we don't know, uh, there is no record of it, but there could have been several babies born in Bethlehem that, that night. But I tell you what, that was the only one that was born in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. I mean, we see here in this beautiful scene of, of the birth of G, baby Jesus, Mary pondered the providence of God, I believe, about the place of Bethlehem. God, you, listen, God's hand was in all of this. It was not an accident that Caesar Augustus made a decree that all the world be taxed and everybody go back to their home city and be counted. That just wasn't an accident. God, the God of heaven, in His sovereign providence, even, you know what, God rules all the kingdoms of the world, Amen. heaven and earth. And I believe it was the God of heaven that even used that political leader to call people to go and be uh, counted to be taxed. That's what brought them to Bethlehem at the exact hour of the baby to be born. God, you know what, 
God orders all things in heaven and earth, doesn't he, church? So Mary pondered the place which he was born in Bethlehem. I believe the second thing that Mary pondered was the providence of God in the activity of the shepherds. I mean, it was strange enough to be in a, in a, in a different city that they was not familiar with. It's time to give birth to the baby, and there was no room for them in the inn. And every Christmas when I read that scripture, I, I must always com comment, uh, you can't get away from this. There is still a world out there that has no room for Jesus. And where are they going to go? They're going to go to a simple place of humility over in the manger scene. And I, I've, I've never been in a, in a, in a barn uh, setting where, where there's a lot of animals that didn't have the stench and the stink uh, of, that didn't, wasn't that good. And that's exactly where Christ was born. They're in the humility of that manger scene. Now, do you think it's strange? That, that may have been strange enough in itself, but how strange do you think Mary must have thought when shepherds show up? And surely she must have said, what are you doing here? And you know what? And they begin to tell her the story. They begin to tell her why they arrived. I believe Mary's pondering this. Not just the, the providence of God in the, the city of Bethlehem, but I believe even the providence of God in the arrival of the shepherds. Why, why look at it with me. You know, why have you come? She must have surely asked, why are you here? And they begin to tell the story. And it begins there in verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And I'm sure they had to share all of this with young Mary. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now listen, Mary already knew. She had given birth to the very Son of God. She already knew from the message of the angels. And now you can connect the dots. And the shepherds show up and they say, You know what? God brought us here. <laughs> hey, a Savior is born. Christ the Lord. I mean, verse 12, And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And I could just see Mary and Joseph as the shepherds told them the story. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see the thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. Verse 17, it's right there is where they're telling the story to Mary Here's how it happened. Here's why we're here. Here's what we've seen and here's what we've heard and here's why we have come. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. And of course then that verse 19, And Mary kept these things. Oh, she pondered them in her heart. You know, do it. That, you know what she's looking at here really? She sees the providence of God and she realizes she's in Bethlehem at the exact time for that exact reason. And it's God that had brought her there. She also realizes the providence of God at the arrival of the shepherds. And as they tell their story, it all comes together. She's still thinking of God did this. <laughs> hey, man didn't do this. God did this. In all of His providence. And I wonder, I wonder this morning, you know, God's been with us too, hasn't He? 
Amen. 2020 is the craziest year I can ever remember. And God's been with us through it all. God's been with us. We've not been alone through all this. And I wonder, do we, do we ponder the providence of God in our own lives? I mean, see, God, God's working all things in our life. And God's working all the time in our life. There's that scripture we reflected on just a week or two ago. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to them that love God, them are the, who are the called according to His purpose. And what that verse is really saying is God's always working on you. God's always working on us. We've got the providence of God working in and around us at all the times. Just as it was not an accident that Mary showed up in Bethlehem at just the right time to give birth to the baby Jesus, it's not an accident either, some of the things we go through. God has brought us to this place in time. Right? God has brought each of us to different situations and, and different circumstances. And here we're getting ready to approach another new year, 2021, right around the corner. And I tell you what, you say, what do you think the new year is going to bring for us over there in 2021? I don't have a clue. I can tell you this, God's waiting for us over there. The providence of God is leading us and directing us. And God knows what's going to happen before we, before we ever get there. God's still on the throne. Amen? God's in control of all things. As we've said, all, all, all things in heaven and earth, God's still working in all things all the time. By the way, I, I would even venture to go far enough to say this. There's not an accident any of you came to church today. Didn't the Lord bring you here? I mean, it might be our, our regular time of worship. Sure it is. It just ought to be routine. And it should. Where are you going on Sunday? Well, I'm going to God's house. But I believe every time we come, the providence of God is working in our services. Dealing with hearts and dealing with needs. And there might just be one thing said in this whole message that God brought you here for you to hear to encourage you today, to be a blessing to you today, to be a help to you today. That's how God works. Amen? So we see this. You know, it was important that they reflected on things back then. Now I'm going to go back to the book of Deuteronomy. I mean, it was even back then they were supposed to ponder some things in their heart. It was even back then they were supposed to reflect on uh, the and be reminded of God's power, be reminded of God's goodness, be reminded of God's mercy in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I'm going to read verses 2 through 6. We could go farther, but I'm going to read those verses. And how's it start off? Thou shalt remember. Hey, there's some things we ought to remember today. Ponder in our hearts. Consider. What is it? All the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that uh, notice that man doth not live by bread only. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Now listen, church, they was there told that there were some things they needed to remember. I believe that's what Mary's doing in this scripture. She's pondering these things in her heart. The providence of God in Bethlehem. The providence of God in the arrival of the shepherds and the wonderful message they shared that the angel had shared with them. And this Christmas, that's, is that not something we can do with the right attitude? We can, we can also ponder God working in our lives. The providence of God in our lives. Knowing that God is with us. God is there. 
I mean, He's there to help us, to bless us, to encourage us, to sustain us, to give us victory, to give us peace, to give us strength in time of trial. Oh, listen, God's with us, church. And then there's the second thing that I believe Mary also pondered and reflected on. And you know what it was? It was the prophecies of God. She reflected on prophecy. Because everything that happened in Bethlehem on that given night was prophesied. It was prophesied. Years and years had gone by and now the prophecy was being fulfilled. Mary pondered the prophecy concerning her son, the Lord Jesus. Well, I drop on down about verse 33. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Now think about that. They marveled. They was amazed at the things that was spoken concerning the Lord Jesus. Well, what was she marveling about? She was marveling because of the prophetic prayer of an old gentleman by the name of Simeon. Now go back to 25 and I'll show you his prayer and how prophetic it truly was. And I believe it was this prophetic prayer of Simeon that Mary and Joseph marveled at on that event. Verse 25, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Remember, when it says he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, listen to me, church, he was waiting for the Messiah. He was waiting for the coming Lord. He was waiting for the Messiah of Israel. He was waiting for the Savior of mankind, the consolation of Israel. In verse 26, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. He would not see death until he saw the Lord Jesus. And he came with the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the Christ, in the child Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God. Oh, here's the prayer. He blesses God and says, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Can you say amen? amen. Hey, Simeon says, Lord, you can let me go now. <laughs> I've seen the salvation. I've seen the Christ child, which thou hast prepared before the face of all the people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And when he prayed that prayer, Joseph and Mary marveled at those things which they had sp spoken of him. Now you know what our prayer ought to be today? Simeon's prayer, really, he was promised by the Holy Ghost that Simeon, you will not die until you've seen the consolation of Israel. You won't die until you get a good look at the Savior. Should not that be our prayer today for every lost soul? that they not die until they see the Savior? How many of you got in your family this Christmas that's still living in sin? How many of you got in your family this morning, church family, that is still unsaved and they're still without Christ and there's still a guilty distance from God and if they would die today in their sins, they would die without hope. They would die without a Savior. Church, shouldn't our prayer today be that they don't die before they see the Savior? Come on now. I mean, that's really what the Holy Ghost promised Simeon. You'll not die until you see the Savior. <laughs> and now that he saw Jesus, Simeon's ready to go on home, isn't he? Lord, let it be now. He's seen the promise. Well, you know what? And, and, I, and I love the way he prayed that prayer because notice what he says about Jesus. Notice what he says in that verse. He said, Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God. Now thou lettest thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. Mine eyes have seen thy salvation that thou hast prepared before the face of all people. I want you to get verse 32. 
a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And I think right now, Joseph and Mary are marveling over those two things. Not just the fact that they heard the, the prophetic prayer by the man by the name of Simeon. I believe Mary was marveling because it was her son Jesus, listen to me, who came to bring salvation to the Gentiles and the Jews. That's what Simeon said in that prayer. He, he came to shine light to the Gentiles. Now why did the Gentiles need light? Because we was in darkness. The gospel needed to be illuminated to our eyes that we could understand our need of a Savior. And Jesus did just that. I mean, He came to set the captive free. Can you say amen? He come and illuminated our eyes so we would have conviction in our heart and see the need of a Savior. Oh, I like that. To light, a light to lighten the Gentiles. Jesus shined that light. Amen. He, a revelation. It was an illumination to the Gentiles. We was blind. And praise God because of Jesus. Now we can see. But then it was, notice what he said. I believe Mary also marveled because her son was to be the very glory to Israel. The glory to Israel. And by the way, only God ought to get glory. Amen. In Christ Jesus. God the Son deserves that glory. It was prophesied through Simeon that he would not only give light to the Gentiles, praise the Lord, but you know what? He would also, he would also be the glory to Israel. We think back to the Old Testament. It's called the Shanachai and the glory. And I'll tell you, the, the illumination. And it, what it represent? Why, it was the very presence of God. And now we see the glory to Israel. And Jesus is that illumination. Oh, He is God the Son and the Son of God. We see His incarnation. He is the flesh. He came to dwell among us as the Savior, as the Son of God. And I believe Mary pondered these prophecies concerning her dear son Jesus. I mean to hold that babe in her arms... Can you imagine? Can you imagine for a moment? She had knowledge of this. She knew as she looked into the face of her baby, she was looking into the very face of God. Wow. Into the very face of our Creator. And the Creator came to die for His creation. Came through that manger scene because He loved you and me that much. Man, I tell you, if you, can't, if you want to do something this Christmas, just get a hold of how much God loves you. That'll do something for your attitude. Hey, that'll do something for your outlook this Christmas. I mean, just reflect and ponder on some things. How God loved us so much, He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, that we would not have to perish, but praise the Lord, we could have everlasting life. I mean, he come to bring light to the Gentiles and glory to Israel. Praise the Lord. Well, understand this. And this is kind of the way we closed out last Sunday morning. We can't help but look at all this without realizing there are still other prophecies concerning the Son. And we need to be looking for Him. Hey, He's at the door. And we need to be watching for His coming. Christmas. We celebrate His coming in a manger scene. That was basically His call. We, we would call His first coming. But praise God, there's going to be a second coming. And let's ponder on that a little while. Hey, chew on that a little bit today. He's coming back, church. And we need to be watching, prayed up, and ready for His soon return. Praise the Lord. Mary pondered on some things that day. I mean, out of Israel was born the Savior of the world. Praise God. She pondered on the providence of God. And let's see God in all that we do. And she pondered on the prophecies pointing to His coming. 
And today, church, let's ponder on the prophecy concerning He's coming again. Let us have that attitude this Christmas. Whether you have a whole house full of people or whether you just be a couple of you alone. Oh, let's have a right attitude for Christmas and celebrate the wonderful Savior that loved us and died for our sins. Can you say amen? amen. God bless you today. Let's stand. Our Father, we come to you this morning in Jesus' name. And Lord, we believe in the sovereign providence of God just as much today as Mary saw in action back then, all those years ago, in the place of Bethlehem, in the activity of the shepherds. And yet, Lord, we see you working in our lives just as well. The day you brought many of us to salvation, Lord, we'll never forget that day. And Lord, today as we reflect and we're reminded how, Lord, you're so active in all the parts of our lives. And Lord, even this Christmas, Lord, let us celebrate you. Christmas is about you. Christ coming, loving us, dying for us, raising again that we might have salvation today. Lord, if there's a need in this service, I pray you meet that need at this altar of prayer. God, be real in our midst. Right now we ask you. And I pray, I really pray, everyone will just obey you right now. Some may need to come get saved. Somebody may need to come rededicate their life to you. Lord, I pray, oh, as we come to this Christmas celebration, let us draw nigh to the Son of God. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You need prayer? You come on while we sing. God, I come. You need prayer? Come on. While we sing this last verse, it's for you. I said amen. amen. Lord bless you. Six o'clock tonight, we're going to come back and do it again. Brother Mike, lead us in a song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. living just because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Hey, everybody said, praise the Lord.